Build Back Better, the House version passed yesterday, but as we've discussed here, and I won't go into a lot of details, uh, it's already been gutted uh, in terms of the climate provisions and the social provisions. There's too much privatization, which makes it more expensive and uh, makes it uh, less accessible to people that can use it. You know I mean, for example, the, uh, the means testing basically creates a benefits cliff. So those just beyond who could still use, say, a child care uh, subsidy are going to be without it, and they're going to resent those who get it. It's just politically stupid. And we'll see what the Senate does with it, but just to review on the climate, there is no clean energy standard in it that would mandate emissions reductions in the power sector, basically by the utilities. All that's in there are uh, corporate welfare incentives, grants, guaranteed loans, tax breaks for renewable generation and electric vehicles, which is subsidies to the oil industry, which is invested heavily in solar, the utility industry, and the car industry, which is building the electric vehicles. Uh, again, it would be cheaper to do it through the public sector. So we still need to campaign on what's been the signature issue of the Green Party since 2010, and that's the Green New Deal for Climate Safety and Economic Justice. And the Democrats have abandoned it. I mean, they ran away from it. Yeah, there's some progressives that still talk about it once in a while, but that non-binding resolution that AOC and Markey put in, you know, Pelosi and Schumer have never brought it to the floor for a vote. And even though it's non-binding, they don't even want to give it symbolic support. So the Democrats have abandoned the Green New Deal, and it's time for the Greens to, you know, pick it up and, and keep emphasizing we need the full Green New Deal for climate justice and economic justice.